Today we solve a question using the long bicron or the longitude bicronometer method in the topic for celestial navigation. The example of the celestial body we will be using is the sun. So we start with the question straight away. The question says that it's 31st of August 1992. It's PM on your ship. So the local mean time is in the evening. That means the ship on the ship it's evening. The position of the ship is given as 10 degree 11 minutes south and 0 degrees longitude. The sextant altitude of the sun's lower limb, LL, stands for lower limb of the sun, was 39 degrees 15 minutes. The chronometer with an error of 1 minute 30 second fast showed 3 hours 11 minutes 20 seconds. The index error was 2.5 minutes on the arc. The height of I was 17 meters. And you have to find the position line and a position through which the position line passes. So when it comes to long background questions and we talk about finding out the position through which the position line passes, we basically use the same DR latitude that is 10 degrees and 11 minutes south in this question. But we find out the new longitude using the long background method. All right. So let's get started by finding the long background or longitude. So before we start with the solution, we have to find out the or we have to solve the ambiguity of the chronometer time. So to do so, write down the chronometer time given to you in the question and then add 12 hours to the hour section and write down the other option. There could be two options when a chronometer time is given to you. The error of the chronometer is given to you in the question. Whenever it is fast, you will subtract the error. And whenever it is slow, you add the error. In this case, it was fast. So I subtract the same amount of error from both the options. Again, I get two options of the GMT time. So to find out which is the correct option, I have to apply the LIT correction to the GMT. Now LIT correction is determined by dividing longitude by 15. In this case, longitude was 0 degrees 0 minutes. So if I divide it by 15, I will get 0. So there is no longitude in time correction in this case because it's 0 degrees and 0 minutes. And when I divide it by 15, I still get 0. So the resulting LMT is now same as GMT, which is 3 hours 9 minutes 50 seconds or it's 15 hours 0 9 minutes 50 seconds. Now, how do I know which is the correct LMT? Well, the question itself told me that it's evening on my ship. It's PM on my ship. So the local mean time on my ship must be in the evening. So out of the two cases, it's only the second case in which the local mean time is in the evening. So I will put 31st August here. That would also mean my GMT time is 31st of August 150950. And that is the time I will highlight here in the question. So all right. So uh, then we find out the GHA and the declination using the GMT date and time that we have just discovered. All right, so to do that, we'll go into the nautical almanac of 1992 and determine the GH in the declination. So for 31st of August at 1500 hours, let's find out the information that we can from the nautical almanac. So 31st of August is here. This is 31st of August. We have the sun here. 1500 hours is somewhere here. This is where your GH is. So this is your GH and this is your declination. Your declination is 8 degrees 24.2 minutes north. And we also note down that the declination from 1500 hours to going to 1600 hours is decreasing. That means the decorrection that we will be applying will also be subtracted. All right. The other information that we can find out is the D value, which we'll be using to go into the increment section later on to find out the decorrection value for the declination. So once we find all these values out, we go back and we check whether we have used the same values or not. All right. So that's the values we have used. We have found the GHA. We have found the declination and we have found the D value. Let's go and find out the increment value now for the GHA as well as the D correction value for the declination for 9 minutes and 50 seconds because the GHA that we have found is for 15 hours and the declination that we have found it was 15 hours as well. So we have to apply a correction of the minutes and the section, the second section as well so that we can get the GHA and the declination for the correct time of 150950. All right, because that's the one that we are aiming for. So go into the increments page for 9 minutes and 50 seconds in the nautical almanac. So I'll come out of this page. And 9 minutes and 50 seconds is here. So you can see I've already highlighted 9 minutes and 50 seconds. This is the increment. See if I can highlight, highlight it for you. So this is the increment, 9 minutes and 50 seconds. 227.5 for sun. The D value is 0.9, which we got from the bottom of the page, but the D correction value is 0.1. So correction is in the next column here. It's in the other column for V or D value. 
right so we find out the increment and the decorrection and we go back and we apply the page in the uh, solution here so the increment is always added so we will add the increment and we get the corrected GHA the declination was to be subtracted because the declination was reducing from going from 1500 hours to 1600 hours so we have found out the declination as well so the declination is there you can just write down the latitude below the declination here and then we can go on to solve this extend altitude to find out the true altitude and the resulting true zenit distance from it so the sextant altitude given to us in the question is 39 degree 15 minutes the index error is on the arc so it will be subtracted if it was off the arc we would have added it but if this is on the arc we will subtract it from the minute side we get observed altitude of 39 degrees 12.5 then we find out the height of eye correction for 17 meters which is known as dip so what we do then we go into the nautical almanac again and uh, i'll come out of this page so if you can see this page here this is the height of eye correction here this is the dip correction so the height of eye in meters is about 17 meters which will be between 16.9 and 17.4 and the correction is minus 7.3 at this point of time you should just pause the video and look carefully at this page so that you know where the corrections are coming from the reason i rush through this is because i want to keep these videos short and also because i have made a number of videos on this and i'm assuming that you must have seen those videos as well if not then of course you pause the video and look carefully on this page as to how i got these values so you can see the height of i is given here in meters i went down this column and you know don't need to do any interpolation the 17 meters of height of i falls under the uh, or rather falls between 16.9 and 17.4 for which the correction is minus 7.3 so we just come out of this page and you can see that is the correction i've applied height of i correction is always negative it's never positive so just apply the correction as negative and you get the apparent altitude of 39 degrees 5.2 now 39 degrees 5.2 is the apparent altitude now you have to find out the total correction value for the sun's lower limb for the date of 31st of august 1992 so you go back to the same page from where you got your uh, height of eye correction and this time you can see this is the column you have to see this is the total correction column uh, the august month comes under or between april to september this is your lower limb column this is your apparent altitude column so go down the apparent altitude column your apparent altitude is 39 degrees 7.2 which will fall between 37 24 and 39 48 again no interpolation required you find out the lower limb correction which is always positive plus 14.8 upper limb corrections are negative lower limb corrections are positive you will apply the correction here you get your true altitude as 39 degrees 20 minutes to get the true zenith distance or tzd tzd stands for true zenith distance and how do you get it well you just subtract the true altitude from 90 degrees so of course subtract the smaller number from the larger number the larger number is 90 degrees it doesn't mean that you will write a negative true zenit distance then distance is never negative just subtract the true altitude from 90 degrees that would be 90 degrees minus 39 degrees 20 minutes which will give you the true zenit distance of 50 degrees and 40 minutes once you do that you just have to find out the lha value cos p p stands for lha or local r angle to do so just put it in the formula here sine of true altitude plus or minus sine latitude sine declination divided by cos altitude cos declination now you are wondering why plus or minus well plus or minus depends on this factor here if latitude and declination are same names that is if both are south and both are north it will be minus and if they are different names that is if one is south and the other one is north then it will be added so in this case they are different names declination is north and latitude is south so they will be added that's right they are different names so then just put in the value this is the true altitude value this is the and you have put a plus sign because latitude and declination are the different names then you put the latitude value here you put the declination value here and similarly you put the latitude value here and declination value here this is a multiplication this is a multiplication just check with the values that i have put make sure that your values are matching with mine i have solved the numerator first and then the denominator divide the denominator numerator by the denominator of course then cos p will be equal to 0.67749 i have stuck to five decimal places you can go more if you want to don't go less the more the number of decimal places the more accurate it is take cos here becomes cos inverse cos inverse of this value gives you the lha value of 47.4 degrees or what you can write as 47 degrees 21 minutes all right now the rule of thumb here with a long background question is that if it is after meridian passage then p that you find out is equal to lha otherwise it's 360 degrees minus lha now how do i know if it's after meridian passage 
well the local mean time on my ship is around 1500 hours right 1500 hours now my meridian passage will occur somewhere around the noon time which is 1200 hours definitely this is after meridian passage therefore p will be equal to lha and lha equals to p which is equal to 47 degrees 21 minutes the gha that i have found out earlier is 47 degrees 25.2 minutes therefore my longitude will be the difference between the lha and gha and it will be west why because a gha best longitude west so if gha is more than lha if gha is more than lha longitude is west if gha is least longitude is east so if gha was less than lha longitude would be east but in this case you can see my gh is more than lha and the difference between the two is 0 0 degrees 4.2 of course you take the bigger number and subtract the smaller number from it and west otherwise you can also look at it conceptually conceptually if you look at it this is the celestial greenwich meridian celestial greenwich meridian uh, from the greenwich meridian to the uh, celestial body which is the sun this angle here is the gh this is the gh gh is equal to 47 degrees 25.2 all right i'll use a different pen now now lha is from the body from the observer measured westward to the celestial body now greenwich uh, gh is also measured westward from the greenwich meridian all right so lha this blue line here this is lha lha is 47 degrees 21 minutes therefore longitude which i will use a green pen now you can see longitude is measured east or west depending on where the observer is here of course the observer is to the west of the greenwich therefore this value here is longitude is west and it is the difference between the two so this is how you solve it conceptually as well so you should understand it both conceptually as well as numerically to apply the concept and correct your answers or recheck your answers all right guys i leave this here now uh, let me know what you thought about this videos and whether you want me to solve any particular questions I am trying to take up as many questions as possible so that you guys get experience of different kind of questions and how they can be framed in the exam. So I will leave you guys here. All the best with your studies and I will see you soon with my next video.